Zins mowers. On today's video, we are putting this eight and a half horse Briggs engine on this weed eater side discharge deck. This is a 20 inch platform. I was supposed to have put this engine onto this deck back here, but there were a change of plans because this little three horse Briggs came on this weed eater deck. This weed eater deck used to have a Tecumseh motor, so I had a heck of a time finding a brake cable that would accommodate for a Briggs engine for this deck. So we figured we'd just go ahead and put this power washer motor on here so we didn't have to deal with the brake cable. I'm going to show you a list of the tools and materials you will need. Part numbers for the blade and for the blade adapter are listed as well. So just stay tuned. Okay, now with the preparation stages for this build, I pulled this engine off the shelf. I don't remember, because I was given this engine recently, so I don't know how long it sat with gas in it. Even though it ran when I fired it earlier this week, I still drained the carb, sprayed the gas tank out with some carb spray, and I also did, what I, and it's a good thing I did decide to clean the car because I determined that the bowl nut seal needed to replace, but I had one here in the shop. So, and we also drain, and even though the oil did not need to be changed in this, we are going to change the oil in this, so I've already drained it. Alright, so I'm going to get to other parts of the preparation stage. I've decided I'm going to use these standard 13 millimeter push mower motor mount bolts. This is a 13 millimeter head and it's got a built-in lock washer. It's got that triangle shape. Now, even though this motor is already set up in a three hole mounting configuration, just like a push mower engine, I still had, I had to rethread these holes because I had trouble getting these bolts to go in the first time. So what I did, and if you have a tap set, you can just go ahead and do this, but this, this is an aluminum block, so this is also easy. I just lubricated the inside of these holes in these bolts with some WD-40. I got these bolts as straight as I could and ran them in with the socket and then backed them out. It's still going to be just as tight. But anyway, there are some details I'm going to go over with this motor before we go ahead and mount it. Okay, what I wanted to tell you guys about this particular Briggs 8.5 horse engine, this does not have a bail brake. Unlike this Hyper Tough mower that I fixed, it has a bail brake. So instead, what Briggs and Stratton did, since they didn't intend for this to be used as a push mower engine, they put an on-off switch above the carburetor that's wired into the coil. If you know what you're doing, you could wire you a switch up to the handle from the coil for added safety. I'm not going to do that because this is a personal mower. I don't. I encourage you guys not to build these if you don't know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing, go ahead and do what you want at your own risk. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and mount this motor. Okay, guys, I want to go over something before we do this. Now this can work on any other project as well if you're motor swapping a push mower and your shaft is a little long, which doesn't apply in this case, but I'm just going over this. These are zinc 3 8 inch flat washers with a 3 8 inch inside diameter, and these can slip on a push mower motor mount bolt. And you can use these to raise your engine up for if for, for whatever reason your shaft is too long. But anyway, we're not going to need these, so we'll just set them aside. We're going to go ahead and crank these motor mount bolts down. All right, one more thing I wanted to go over. There is a uh, part of the block that is molded to fit inside of this hole on this push mower frame. Now this push mower frame, like I said, it's already made for three hole mounting configuration motors. I'm going to go ahead and turn this, start putting these in. Okay, now you gotta make sure these motor mount bolts are super tight. Like I said before, it doesn't hurt the block to re-thread these in like I did. And they're just as tight as if, I did, if they were the right ones.
I'll go ahead and get these done and then I'll be back with the blade mounting. So what we got going on here, I ordered this brand new 20 inch blade and a brand new blade adapter. Now this blade has that oval shaped star point like you see a lot nowadays. I had a little bit of a hard time finding this blade in 20 inch but I found it for like $20 ordered this brand, this brand new adapter that fits right in this hole and what we're going to do this is our standard 5 8 push mower blade mount bolt what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift and it's important how you orient this we orient this, wall, this plate washer with these tabs up so that it can, it can grab inside of these two holes on the side we're just going to slip this down in and there's another part I'm going to show you once I get this on here. Okay, there was an unforeseen issue when I was putting this together. The blade, the edge of the blade, I could put my hand in the side discharge and the blade would be sticking up just a little bit. I don't want that for safety issues. So what I did, I found a blade adapter just like this. And this blade adapter also fits a 5-8 shaft. It's just got a bigger sleeve and a thicker bottom to lower the blade on this adapter they used to have two side bolts to screw this in but we're not going to need those so but it's got and it's got the same star pattern also took this this longer pump mount bolt off of a honda pressure washer engine same issue the pump was garbage so i just took this pump mount bolt off this honda engine so i could use it on here and we're going to use this plate washer still but anyway we're going to go ahead and line this up okay i had to make this blade a little safer with this bigger adapter instead of this blade being halfway up the deck it sits all the way down this is a half inch bolt from a honda pressure washer pump i just happened glad i happened to save this because it's we're going to need this longer bolt to get through the thickness of the adapter and into the crank. So we're just going to line this up. already got my half inch socket ready. So here we go. Okay, I decided to use one of those spacer washers that I showed you earlier in the video. The ones I would normally use to raise the motor up. I just decided to put this on here for extra stability for the blade. We're just going to go ahead and crank this on down. Make sure this blade's tight because this motor, like I said, this motor has a lot of power, guys. This ain't just your crappy three-horse Briggs. This is a massive eight-and-a-half-horse engine that we're upgrading to. Then I'll get back with you once we get up top. Had trouble locating my funnel, so just going to do this the best way we can. We may spill a little bit of it, but we'll try and get this in here without spilling it. Just slowly pour this in. I'm going to pour about 18, uh, 20 ounces in here. This is 18 ounce bottle. I got this for like the regular push mower motors. These motors take about 20 ounces. So I'm gonna, I got another open bottle. I got some in. So I'm going to pour some more of that in. But we'll finish pouring this in first. And then I'll do that other stuff off camera. Just slowly pour. And dip this up. This port slow and steady wins the race, guys. That settle a little bit. Now I'm just using the regular SAE 30 oil, by the way. Just do that while we let that settle in. And we'll finish pouring this. I'll just go ahead and get off and finish this up. Now we are ready for our test run. We put fresh gas, fresh oil in here. Got this all mounted up, looking good. Here's one another reminder I should have told you guys about earlier. I probably told you this in the last video that I did. By the way, I am going to link that video in the description if you want to go watch it, that other test run. That's not much different than this one, but anyway... I did tighten this handle up, and you got to make sure that this handle's all the way tight because this mower does produce a lot of power. But anyway, here we go. Switch on. The choke is automatic. Put my foot up here. Pull the cord. Where is it going to 
got this little area up here. Make sure this thing's striping good. Take y'all back there and we're gonna cut some of this high grass. It powers right through this stuff. You gotta be careful back here too. Keep your safety glasses on at all times. Just got all this good stuff. to clean your yard before you use one of these too because it'll cut anything it, this blade will cut anything it hits virtually so probably should have moved that brick but we're going to cut around it I'm going to take you guys back down the yard to see how nice this thing stripes up
you guys not giving it a chance. Overall, I am pretty pleased with this pressure washer push mower build that I've completed. I'm glad that I got to get on here and show you guys not just me test running it, but actually how the behind the scenes on how I did it, what tools and materials that I used. And it'd probably be similar for what you guys do if you, if you decide to do this. I'd encourage you not to do it for your own safety because once more these do not have bail brakes cables. And said they have the switches on the bottom. But if you do decide to do this, I hope and pray that you stay safe. And I hope you're and hope and pray that your build goes very well, like mine. And for now, I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.